Hi friends, welcome back to 25 Sweet Peas. I am super excited about today's video because this is the start of our new series for the month of December where I'm revisiting old lighthouse illustrations that I have already done and turning them into sort of Christmas magical spaces where I'm going to shift the illustration to a kind of like a sunset time or nighttime setting. And then I'm also gonna decorate the said lighthouse for Christmas, whether the lighthouse in real life decorates or not will be very, will vary, I guess you could say. Um, the Santa Bell Lighthouse in general does decorate for Christmas and past Christmases this year is probably very different for them and they're not gonna be able to do that. So I really was looking forward to kind of getting to decorate this lighthouse for Christmas and hopefully bring some sort of joy to everyone that loves the Santa Bell Lighthouse it's going to be missing out on that tradition this year because of everything that they are recovering from with Hurricane Ian. And this is the first lighthouse that I ever illustrated. And it just like holds a really, really special place in my heart. So I'm super excited to be featuring it in today's video. So I'm officially already started in the video, but I'm going to talk you through this a bit. So the Santa Bell Lighthouse was the first lighthouse that I ever illustrated in I believe I first illustrated a lighthouse last year, so that would be in 2021. And I really wasn't sure how it was going to come out, but I fell in love with illustrating lighthouses. And ever since then, like lighthouses are my go-to thing to illustrate. They're so fun. You get to like learn about them at the same time. There's so much history behind every lighthouse. And while I'm not a huge like history person, I love local history and history in areas that I immensely care about. So the Sanibel Lighthouse in particular is actually the first lighthouse that I ever remember visiting. It's not necessarily my first lighthouse, but it is the first one in my memory that I visited. And it was Sanibel Island in general is actually the first island place that I ever vacationed in Florida. That was way before I lived in Florida. And I think it's just a very special place in my mind. and. Having seen so much in the news this year after Hurricane Ian, it's just like really, really sad and everything. So I really wanted to highlight the lighthouse first in this series, even though we're going to be doing multiple over the course of December. I'm really excited about it. But I'm going to start, well, I have already started the process of the illustration in the background, but I thought it would be fun to do a little something different while I illustrated. So I actually thought we could go over some of the history of the Sanibel Lighthouse. So... If you are not familiar with this lighthouse, it is located on the east end of Sanibel Island, which is in Florida. It is on the Gulf Coast. If you are not super familiar with Florida, if you kind of know where Tampa is, go south of there on the island side, on the barrier islands, and you're going to get to Sanibel. It is a lovely little island that is absolutely beautiful. They're really known for really great shelling and a beautiful place to vacation. Obviously that's not really a thing right now, but let's get back to the history part of it. So this lighthouse sort of came about, or maybe it was first suggested by settlers of the island in 1833, but it wasn't until after the Civil War that there was another request to actually get things moving as this part, this time they used the idea of that this lighthouse would help increase trade. It would help make the island easier to be found by travelers. And at that point, things started to be moving, but there was no real action actually taken until 1883 when funding for the lighthouse became available. And then the construction of the lighthouse began in February of 1884. The lighthouse was finally completed and lit in August, on August 20th in 1884, which when you think about it, February to August, that seems like pretty quick for that time frame to build something so big and so tall, in my opinion. Um, and then a fun fact is that the light keeper actually had to use an external spiral staircase to get up to the top. And then in addition to the lighthouse being built, there were also actually really cute little buildings surrounding the lighthouse that were often used as living quarters for those staying there, that including the lighthouse keepers. And it had a few different lighthouse keepers, over the course of the years and until 1949. The last one actually began staying there in 1946 and this person's name was Bob England and he was 
put there by the Coast Guard. But then in 1949, a hurricane badly damaged the lighthouse and the surrounding area. And at that point, they decided that this would be a good time to actually automate the lighthouse so they didn't have to have a lighthouse keeper there at all times and especially during hurricanes. Then in 1972, the Coast Guard proposed the idea of discontinuing the use of the lighthouse. But the local mariners and the people that lived on the island opposed this idea very much so and convinced them not to discontinue the lighthouse, which actually worked. They did not discontinue the lighthouse and it is still working. Then in 18... Sorry, not 18... In 1982, people who lived on Sanibel were actually able to live in the development by the lighthouse for free in exchange for helping it to maintain the area around it because they no longer needed a lighthouse keeper, but they still needed to maintain the area in general. Then, after being owned by the Coast Guard, the lighthouse was actually given to the city of Sanibel in 2004, which is also an interesting tidbit of information because that's actually three years after I went to Sanibel for the first time. But at that point, the lighthouse did need some assistance. It would needed some extra love, and the city started to raise money to try and fix up the lighthouse. And then in 2013, they did raise enough money and were working on restoring the building. Well, I'm sure between 2013 and 2022, there were many storms that affected the area. Hurricane Ian in 2022, so this year, just a few months ago, was major for the Sanibel Island Lighthouse and the island in general. I remember the day so vividly and I wasn't even there, but still in the path of Hurricane Ian, I had the weather channel on and was glued to all the news reports and everything. Sanibel has always sort of been like a special place in my mind because it was my first ever vacation spot to Florida. The Sanibel Lighthouse was my first lighthouse that I actually remember. It's not necessarily my first lighthouse, but it's the first one that I have a memory of. And unfortunately, Hurricane Ian has changed the island forever, and particularly the Lighthouse Park area. Despite early reports of the lighthouse actually being gone, it does still stand, thankfully. That was a rumor at the very beginning whenever people were like assessing the damage, and that was not great information. But it does still stand. However, it did lose a leg. And the shoreline looks a lot different, plus it lost the surrounding buildings to the lighthouse. Um, there is a temporary fix in place for the lighthouse, so it does have some support under it where it did lose a leg. But some exciting and kind of neat news is they found the actual leg that is missing. It was about three feet under the sand, and they are planning on fixing up the lighthouse. But obviously right now, Sanibel has a lot of cleanup to do and recovery and rebuilding before they actually get to the lighthouse, as there's so many people that live there that need a lot of assistance as houses were deemed unlivable it's just it's a mess there um the community is definitely dedicated to cleaning up the area rebuilding and restoring the magicalness that sanibel has always had so as you may or may not know the first ever lighthouse i illustrated i think i said this earlier was the sanibel lighthouse and it was also in the first ever sticker launch that i did in my shop which started earlier this year so after the hurricane i started to notice a lot of people were paying attention to the sticker online and when that started to happen, I wanted to figure out how I could actually help Sanibel area directly from the sales of the stickers. So I have actually found that I can help by reaching out and donating to Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation. They are local to the Sanibel Captiva area and specifically work in the park area of the Sanibel Lighthouse. And they do a lot for the environment. So taking care of environmental problems helping the wildlife and habitat in the area. And most importantly right now is they're dealing with a red tide, which is unfortunately affecting a lot of the marine life in the area, a lot of dead fish and other creatures in the area, which is really sad. Um, but they do a lot for the area. And this, if you purchase our Sanibel sticker, that actually goes to help the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation. So I'm very excited that my art can also help such a beloved area to so many. Um, I will link it down below because we are going to be keeping the donations going throughout the rest of this year. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to kind of share all that information in this video. And I think learning a little bit about the history of the lighthouse just makes it all that much more special. And I feel like whenever Hurricane Ian happened, so many people all over the world were like talking about Sanibel because everybody knows Sanibel. It's a great place to go vacation. So many people do vacation there. It's absolutely lovely. 
and I'm just so happy to see the lighthouse still standing and the community is really coming together they're working on things I have been following many of the businesses in that area and it's great to see them work you know on rebuilding and just everything a lot of Florida has been affected by major hurricanes this year and even non-major hurricanes that had a major major impact so while Florida is I would say Florida is a very loved state in general because everybody loves to vacation here and I feel like whenever we see these beautiful communities get so much destruction and damage due to a natural disaster we can't all help but want to help in some way. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video seeing this little Christmas version of the Sanibel Lighthouse come to life and I am going to go ahead and let you guys finish this illustration piece. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had so much fun doing it. It's so different for me doing this sort of color scheme and approach to things, but it was a lot of fun. And the research process of this video was also kind of interesting. I've learned a lot. And um, I will leave a link to all the websites where I found the set information. And I think that's officially it. So I hope you guys enjoy watching the rest of this video and this illustration. And I will be doing more lighthouses in the coming weeks and days. So I can't wait to have you guys back. And if you have a lighthouse you would love me to illustrate in the future, please let me know down in the description box down below. I'm always making lists. I should say checking them twice, but I'm, I'm always making lists and doing lots of lighthouses because they're just so much fun to me. So that's officially it for me. I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of this. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest and I will talk to y'all later.